Hello friends, I'm Lady M, and welcome to Peluca Party. As an artist, mother, butter connoisseur, and all around bon vivant, we'd like to show you our version of things. Outside of drag, I'm the quintessential artist with a day job, several side gigs, and hustling for health insurance in New York City. Once a year, we like to get continental, and I'm not just talking about your holiday inn breakfast. I'm talking about travel. So without further ado, we'd like to present to you our holiday travel spectacular. Okay, here we are in our car on the way to JFK Airport, riding off into the afternoon sunset before our evening flight. Having a little pre-flight meal, club sandwich and french fries. There we are, ready and raring to go. And here we are, landing finally in Madrid before we make our connection to Malaga. First stop, Malaga. And our most important thing of the day was lots of caffeine, more caffeine, and more caffeine. And of course, these tasty little bocadillo sandwiches. After that, we decided to walk around a bit and we discovered this beautiful area of town with the lovely little old market. It had this gorgeous glass open air ceiling, uh, beautiful stained glass. Just look at all those colors and lovely little details that you don't see in modern supermarkets nowadays. There's some gorgeous shots of some mushrooms, fresh produce, dried fruit and nuts. Truthfully, we had 20 shots of this market, all just different products and things that we saw that looked so delicious. Being during the holiday season, we uh, found this main thoroughfare which was just covered in lights, even more beautiful at nighttime than in the daytime as well. Eventually we had some lunch and here's a beautiful shot of my gorgeous burrata salad with tomatoes. Later, at a car and fashion museum we discovered, um, anyone who's traveled over international time zones and things knows the first day is always about battling jet lag, so this was a lovely place indoors uh, that we got to while away some time and of course observe some beautiful objects and things, so win-win. Uh, this well-crafted garment, for instance, was made up of individual little sculpted modules and uh, required a closer look. Next day, we were feeling rested and well-refreshed, and we decided to take a trip to La Exposition, the Botanical Gardens in Malaga. 
full of lots of beautiful plants, reflecting pools, and interesting architecture which we decided to explore. Inside we found this sort of secret garden hidden corridor into a little inside garden with a fountain and lots of little interesting architectural details such as tile work. There's also lots of little informational plaques and things at the museum which tell you about all the different historical figures which contributed to the growth and the continued growth of this botanical garden. We decided before we left that we had to uh, see the viewpoint from the top and it definitely was worthwhile hike. We also managed to squeeze in some shopping while we were there, uh, popping into a lot of little individual boutiques and things as well as vintage shopping. Lest we forget, Malaga is a beach town on the Mediterranean and beautiful weather, so we had to go to the beach and really just soak up the sun. We spent some time uh, walking along the sand here and even made sure to get some shots with the famous Malagueta side. Taking full advantage, we walked to the end of the pier to get that beautiful viewpoint back towards the beach. Stunning, am I right? Next stop on our tour of Andalusia was Granada. And the most important stop in Granada for us was seeing the Alhambra. Construction started in 1238 and subsequently took a very long time as you can see by the complexity of work here and just the sheer size of everything. The doors, the gardens, the tiles. I recommend if anyone's trying to get their steps in, wear comfortable shoes because you're going to need it. Walking into the Court of Lions, or as it's sometimes called, the Palace of Lions, this very open, clean area with a sort of tranquil fountain in the background there, evokes a real sense of open nature with the upward trees growing out from the ground. I would definitely recommend visiting the Alhambra, and I will give you a little travel tip here. If you do plan to come, first thing you do when you plan to come to Granada is buy your tickets. They are a hot thing to do and they are scheduled time-wise. They do sell out fast, sadly, so buy your tickets online as soon as possible. Definitely remember to bring snacks. Uh, I definitely keep a diet soda in my bag at all times. Oh, and I even forgot my open book bag. Uh, nobody needs a hangry traveler, so bring your caffeine and your snacks if you need them. Like I said, this complex is huge. It will take you like two or three hours. If you want to see every detail, it's going to take you longer than that. photos of this place and there were just no bad angles, no bad lighting. Here we see uh, the Albacin uh, neighborhood where we stayed. I recommend finding any lovely little restaurant where you can then get a nighttime view of the Alhambra. 
Next up, Cordoba. Here at Palacio de Viana, there are 10 or 12 outdoor courtyards. Uh, there's also an indoor area which you cannot film but has lovely paintings, tapestries, definitely worthwhile checking out as well. While in Cordoba, we also took in the mosques of Cordoba. We ate lots of tapas. Uh, tapas are delicious. I think my favorite tapas is the traditional oxtail croquettes. If you look closely in a couple different patios, you can see how they've added poinsettias to really emphasize the holiday season there. And you can also see my new hoodie uh, covered in a Bosch painting. So thanks, Berkshire really sets the tone and matches the background nicely. I really enjoyed the red and green vibe of this patio as well as a huge Christmas tree and uh, banners adorning that sort of top balcony areas. Here we walked down into this sort of sunken patio, which was the last patio of our visit. It features a long reflecting pool and fountain, uh, highlighting its length. Here is a little snippet of the Alcazar de Cordoba. Uh, it was beautiful and we probably forgot to take as much footage as we should have, but if you look closely you can see some of the beautiful orange trees uh, leaving orange droppings that are now floating in the fountain. Here we are at Plaza de la Cordera, uh, walking off probably all those tapas we ate as we previously mentioned. <laughs> it has a very interesting uniform facade to a lot of the buildings, but still very colorful. Interestingly enough, they have found a lot of old Roman mosaic ruins near here, so if you're looking for historical facts, there's one for you. That about hits all the main highlights of Cordoba for us. Uh, it's definitely a one two day trip, but it was a nevertheless worthwhile stop. travel footage though? Okay good, um, you were also expecting other stuff? Like, like, drag things. Oh, okay, um, I guess we have some b-roll footage we could run. Yeah? Oh, okay good, good, good. Yeah, we're, we're all the b-roll footage. Welcome to the beauty shop, hashtag not a tutorial. This lovely number that we've cut and styled with additional blonde wefts from How Your Head Wigs is going to be yet another stunning creation. Here we are brushing her out backwards, trying to break up that hairspray and product before we give her a wash. Dunk here in the sink in a mixture of warm water, a little bit of yellow product that you can see it's a powder. It's actually good for breaking down hairspray and products that you have on hair styling tools, also safe for wigs. Detangling things by hand and really wringing that girl out. Okay, here we are lightly brushing her with a paddle brush. Go spinning her around. She is locked and loaded, blocked down with tool tape and pins and secured to that wig block. Here we go drying the ends additionally, breaking out the teasing comb. Steam, steam, steam. Let's get that curl out as best as we can before we establish a new curl pattern with a lovely old fashioned roller set. Here we go, just sectioning out. Sort of taking the front out and dividing it into different pieces which get a sort of different roller pattern and then the back which is very horizontal. Here we 
go. Carefully and cleanly doing our sections, duckbill clips. Okay, and we are ready to roller set. We start spraying each piece, detangling the ends, and finally rolling them down towards the head and pinning them down with pearl head pins. Here we are, just making sure all the rollers are going away from the part. Front section completed and the crown of the head. Okay, now we got the back down all the way to the tiny last bit on the nape. Carefully, carefully, tightly. We use a slightly smaller roller because they are short. And then here we go with the garment steamer. We are going to hopefully form a nice curl with heat and steam. We're going to get out our lovely white trash bag, sort of incubate this wig, and then we'll leave it overnight and test out the next day to see if our curls are set. Next morning, here we are. We're just going to take out one curl from the back there. Carefully going to unroll her. Big moment, surprise, joy, there we go, oh, lovely. See she's holding the curl on her own, then we can take out our little section comb and sort of marry those two sections in the back, and then we're going to work our way up, just going through all the curls, row by row. Now we're going to run through with the paddle brush and just give her like a loose brush. I kind of left the top ones in the front because of the way I want to smooth and style in the front. I wanted to leave those separate. So now we're going back through those front sections, brushing, 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 more brushing. Um, that is the one thing about synthetic hair, unfortunately, she do want to tangle once in a while and you can't do anything about that. So you just do your best. Now you can see I'm taking the back sections and just sort of smoothing them down after I tease them, sort of just rounding it out and curling it under, sort of like a little bit of a page boy effect there. Really just trying to softly detail and tease the hair into shape. I start to do that all the way up and sort of just like just little, little noodly, little fiddly bits sort of finessing those curls into place. Let's speed her up, we don't have all day. Okay, here we go, just section by section, keeping things light and fluffy, packing down with a pit comb, as well as going through with our teasing brush and really just teasing her for fill. And eventually we get back up to the front after we've nicely sculpted the sides to frame the face. So I'll just trial and error here. A little bit of hairspray and there she is done. We won't give you all the secrets, but that is it. Straight from the beauty shop, a little bit of vintage flavor, which we like to throw in things. And you can see the nice hints of the different blonde tonalities as well as the little bit of a cool lilac running through the back. Something you may not see in a photo, but something that's really nice for in-person viewing. And a little, you know, surprise on the back side there. Mmm, hustle juice. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. As well as follow us on Instagram at House of Mulligatani. Until next time, bye bye